How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, and we're going to talk about why you got scammed by the gurus, right? And so this is going to be a really good video for people that may have bought an online course. They may have bought a physical course, and it didn't go the way they wanted it to go. And so then now they are that audience of people that are on the Internet. They're very disgruntled. They're mad about everything. Uh, they're calling everybody a scammer, yada, yada, yada. And we want to kind of understand, right, why these people stay in the position that they're in. And if you're that person, this is going to give you an understanding of why are you so mad and salty about everything? Why are you supporting people that are just going to keep you in a mad, salty position? And really nothing's going to change about your life. And we're going to kind of talk about that until you do certain things. And so I think maybe you may be dealing with a lack of awareness, right? It's designed to help the person that wants to be empowered because they want to make more money. They want to feel a sense of power and direction in their life because they don't have somebody dictating them how much money they're going to make you know, every year, year in, year out. And the person that doesn't like the fact that they got to take away so much time from their family, you know, they're telling everybody they got to come back to work to make the money that they want to make. However, you got to be the type of person where you want to put the time in, you want to be consistent, you want to learn, you want to apply yourself. It's not an overnight thing. Now, me just saying that, I've pretty much cut 95% of the audience off. Why? Because I told them that there's a requirement to be successful in this particular thing outside of you just buying the thing. And that's really going to speak to what we're talking about. Many people have to ask themselves this question. When I bought this particular online training, or when I went to this online training, what skill set was I going to develop to be successful in the training? Because in this environment, right, most people are going to be successful making money in this environment because they have two things. They have the right skill set and they have a skill set that the market actually desires. And that can also be situational and also can be based on the time period that you live in. So let me give an example. A hundred years ago, a blacksmith, or there's another word starts with an F that they call it overseas, right? That person would be very valuable in the community. Why? Because we need somebody to make sure that our, shoot, or that our horses have good hoof health because we're a horse-driven society, right? So, you know, you can't uh, have horses in bad hoof health. It eventually will destroy the horse. You have to, you know, uh, essentially euthanize it then you'll be running through horses, which can be very expensive and it, it can not allow you to really do what you want to do as a community, right? So blacksmiths were in premium. These people are very valuable to your community. You wanted to keep them in your community. You wanted to keep them happy. You wanted to keep them well-fed. You wanted to keep them comfortable so they can continue to provide for your community, right? In 2023, we no longer need a blacksmith. However, a blacksmith is also very skilled. So if you become a blacksmith in 2023, you have a high level of skill. But the market currently right now in America probably will not value your skill set. Right. However, if you become a mechanic, you're very skilled and the market currently right now will value your skill set. If a mechanic isn't making any money in this society is because probably they don't really want to make money or they have bad work habits. They're late to work. They're drunk. They don't have good follow up skills. Because the skill is very much in demand and people also will pay for your skill set because they need their car. They need their car to operate so they can go make money. Many people, when they take these courses, they're being sold what they really want. What do they want? I don't have to develop a skill to make money. The only reason that resonates with you is because that's what you wanted. So when I explain that you have to apply yourself, you can't look for overnight success. You got to be willing to be diligent and getting the success you want. That automatically tells people, I don't want to pursue this because why? I don't want to develop a skill. Because let me explain to you what, 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 is, what can be a skill to you. You learning how to control your impulses can be a skill to you. If you can't control your impulses, you won't be a successful trader. However, if you have bad impulse control, you walked into trading with bad impulse control. Now, you having bad impulse control and lacking that skill is negatively impacting other areas of your life. You've never figured this out. You now learn trading academically, but you never developed the skill of impulse control. Impulse control, see, this is where people get the mistake. 
impulse control can exhibit itself in multiple ways. It can exhibit itself sexually. It can exhibit itself in, in, in behavior patterns, social behavior patterns. It can exhibit itself in food. It can exhibit itself in, in drugs. There's a lot of different ways it can show up. So you can be a person to where you don't have good food impulse control. It's not about food. It's about a lack of impulse control that shows up in food. You could be a person where you have bad impulse control sexually. It's not an issue of sex, really. It's really an issue of impulse control that shows up as sex. But what you really have is bad impulse control. You don't have the skill of being able to control your impulses. And it exhibits the behavior, exhibits itself in different ways. Some people exhibit itself in one way. Other people exhibit itself in multiple ways. Right? As a result, you now go take this skill. And in this skill, if you don't have good impulse control, you can't be successful. But you're already not as successful as you should be because of what? You have bad impulse control. You, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Many people are looking to get something out of this world, but they don't want to develop the skills to get it. Right? And people have figured that out about that person. So what do they sell them? You can get this result and nothing has to change about you except that you bought this product. You, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? There's a reason why there's a million diets on the market right now. It's not that diets don't work. Diets do work. People say, well, diets don't work. Diets do work, but what do they work to do? See, this is what people don't understand. Diets do work is that what do they work to do? But people are failing at diets because diets don't work, right? People are failing at diets is because they don't stick with the diets. Let me give an example. If you tell a Muslim not to eat pork, they're not supposed to fail at that. They're supposed to just not ever eat pork. Or you tell a Muslim you're not supposed to ingest alcohol. They're not supposed to fail at that. They're just not supposed to ever ingest alcohol, ever. Uh, I know a lot of Orthodox Jews don't eat shellfish. They're not supposed to fail at that. They're just supposed to never eat shellfish. Okay? You have to understand is that if you lack the impulse control in that particular area, you're going to fail at it because you haven't developed that skill of impulse control in that area. Now, if you've never known it, it's going to be easier, right? Because some people don't know what it's like to ingest. I know people that never drink or smoke in their whole life, so they don't even know what they're missing. So they're not tripping on not doing it because they've never done it. Diets do work, but the question is, it's not the diet, it's the lack of impulse control in the person that makes them say, well, you know what? I'm going to go do something different this time. And it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You're like 99% of the population. And so that's what I want people to understand is that a lot of people are upset. But if you ask them what skill, you know, you took Amazon FBA. Well, Amazon FBA does work. But what skills do you need to develop to make it work? But see, when they promote Amazon FBA, they don't promote the skills you need to make it work. Because the people that are likely to buy Amazon FBA don't want to learn skills. They want to learn how to get off their job. They want to learn how to not work as hard as they're currently working. They want to learn how to make money in something that looks relatively easy. That's really what they want. So then they just attach Amazon FBA to getting that result. Right? So many people will tell you, I got scammed by this guru. I, I bought an Amazon FBA course. And it was... Nothing. My question is, why did you buy the course? What were you looking to get? What result were you looking to get out of the course? Second question, what skills were you looking to develop to get that result? And many people will all of a sudden, they'll freeze and won't be able to answer that question. They don't want to be honest about what result they were really looking to get. And then they don't want to tell you that I wasn't really looking to develop any skills. Right? Many people's skill on YouTube was... Their skill is watching YouTube and commenting. They don't have a real skill beside that. Their life, the way they make their money to support their day-to-day -day situation is really not because they're highly skilled. There's a difference between being highly skilled and being highly educated. They're not the same thing. A lot of people are confused between the two. You can be educated and skilled, right? You can be, it's hard to be skilled but not be educated, but you can be educated with very little skills. 
then even if you're skilled, does the market currently at this time value your skill? And these things can be shifting all the time. You may have a hell of a run the first 20 years of your skill set. And then because of changes in the particular market, the changes in the economy, your skill set may not be as valuable as it was the first 20 years. And it is what it is. So let me give an example. A lot of y'all, especially younger people, don't know a lot of these big guys, these, these guys at these big sports platforms, they were writers at one time. Most of these guys were writers. They were journalists. However, the market doesn't value print media the way it used to. So they had to change their skill set. They had to learn how to do videos and start talking and build audiences using visual media. They couldn't do it doing print anymore. Why? Because nobody was reading anymore. Most uh, average person, probably under 30, doesn't even know what it looks like to have the paper come to your house. They don't even know what that looks like. What paper come to your house? Like, what are you talking about? They don't even know what it looks like to have the paper come and show up at your house. Right? Well, a lot of these older sports guys that got big platforms now because they've been in the industry for so long. So as an industry transition, they already had a network built. They initially made their living writing, putting pen on paper. Then as the market started to change, what skill became valuable? You can build an audience online or you can build an audience on television using that visual medium. That became the skill that people started to value. So then the people that couldn't transition got left behind, but the people that could transition, they was able to transition to this new space and all of a sudden become valuable again in sports media. Right? Just because you have a skill today, does not mean that the market is going to value your skill five years now because market conditions change. They do, they change. And I, I'm not a fan of Skip Bayless, but I give him a lot of credit because as an older person, he didn't stay stuck in his lane. He saw the change and he changed with it. He realized the market is going to all visual. It's not going to, people don't know, a lot of young people don't know Skip Bayless is really a writer. He's really a writer. But he realized early 2000s this whole thing is changing to just being all visual. So I have to learn how to communicate verbally and to build a, a narrative verbally and pretty much do the same thing I was doing as a writer, but do it now verbally, be comfortable on the camera. Skip does his own. He has. He one time was doing a lot of Twitter media. He one time had his own YouTube, similar to Shannon Sharp. He's invested a lot in becoming this new person, really reinventing himself. He had to develop a new skill. He could not stay stuck in, I'm a writer, that's all I'm going to do. He could have stayed there, but the world would have moved on without him. Right? So Skip had to go develop a new skill. Many people, so, so let me stay there. Skip didn't go for, I'm going to teach you how to build a social media following, but you don't have to develop a skill to do it. All you got to do is buy my course. Skip didn't go for that. Skip learned the skill of communicating via the internet, via television. He learned that skill. Got very good at it. He's Fox number one guy. He makes the most money on Fox. Right? So he became a big time writer and then became a big time sports guy on television, also on the internet. Became, he's Fox Network's number one guy in sports. Guy makes a lot of money to do sports. He's a double digit millionaire. He gets paid to do sports. Many people have to accept they don't want to develop a skill. For whatever reason it is, they may be tired and feel like I don't have the energy. I have a lot of tech people tell me, man, you take six months to a year, maybe a year and a half, and you go get your tech situation right, you can go back in the market, make, make easily start touching $100,000 a year. But it'll take you six months to a year, you just buckling down and studying, 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 and studying, applying yourself. That's what it'll take. Many people will not spend the next 12 to what, 16 months, developing a new skill that's going to pay them a hundred grand. They won't do the next two years because why? I don't want to develop the skill. I want somebody, I want to get it because I purchased something. Many people think their financial success and the freedom that they want is going to come just like I went to the store and I bought a product. So they think it's like, I go to the store, I buy a honey bun, because I want something that tastes sweet so I can feel good. And I pay for the honey bun. They give me something that tastes sweet. And now I got my emotion fulfilled. And they think buying online or skill-based education is the same way. Now, they didn't put that requirement on the college, but they do put it on online course graders. 
they don't hold the college to that. Right. Because often the college will educate you, but give you no skills. So many people go to college, get the education and go into the workforce. And then what do they got to figure out how to do? They got to figure out actually how to go do their job. So now they got to get trained on the job because they never developed a skill. They just went and got an education and they don't know. A lot of people still don't know the difference between the two. So many people see buying online education as buying a honey bun at the grocery store. So they think the purchase means they have received the benefit of the product. They don't understand you've been given a set of really uh, curriculum and you now have to go develop the skill. If somebody gives you a real estate course, you still got to learn how to do real estate. Still got to learn how to network. You got to learn how to negotiate. You still got to go develop the skill. You buying the course don't mean that, you know, in the next 60 days, you're going to make $100,000 a year. Right? And so people often, because they don't value skills, they don't value paying for anything. See, people value the status of the college more than they value skills. Because if I'm going to give you a skill that's going to allow you to make five grand this year, five grand next year, five grand next year, five grand next year, or even more, how much should I charge you on the front end? So if, if you develop this skill, in two years, you make five grand, five grand, and really you can make more, but let's say in two years, you make five grand. How much should I charge you for that? Because after you pay me, you never pay me again. But you got to go develop the skill. So either you're going to develop the skill in what you pay somebody up front, or you can develop the skill in the hours that you spend trying to figure it out on your own, but you're going to pay somebody. Somebody's going to get paid, or you're going to stay stuck where you're at. And many people don't understand that. And then what they do now is you, you can build a big audience telling them that everybody's a scammer, but the person that's telling you that their skill is building a big online audience. You don't have that skill. That's why you're watching them. They're skilled in getting your attention. You don't have that skill. That's why you watch them and they don't watch you. And they're giving you what you wanted, which is why you got in a problem in the first place with the guru because the guru figured out what you wanted. What you want is I want a result with no work. Then what you also want is I want other people to be to blame for my situation. You can't bring to me no information about somebody being a scammer. I know the real scammers. I just got on a, uh, a live stream talking about Carvana. So I don't care about these little internet people. That, that's, that's not even really like a, a, a real situation to me. Right? I'm looking at the, I'm looking at whales. I'm looking at big Florida Marlins. I'm not looking at minnows, but that's what, you know, if you, if you in the minnow side of the game, then a the minnow is important to you. I'm not in the middle. I'm not in the low end of the pool, right? I'm not on a multi-million dollar level neither, but I don't feel like I'm in the low end of the pool. So if you're in the low end of the pool, what's going on in the low end of the pool is what's important to you. Like when I go to the, the water parks, I don't be in the kiddie pool. I be with the grown folks, right? And I don't just mean chronological age, or physical age, I mean mental age and psychologically, right? I'm not in the kiddie pool. I'm not in the low end of the pool. I'm over there with the grown people, right? Because they know what I'm going to be hanging around a bunch of kids. I can't even have a conversation with them, right? So a lot of you are being sold what you really, really want, which is one, I don't want to develop a skill. Two, I want to find somebody else the reason why I try to get away without developing the skill and it didn't work. And now I want somebody else to tell me that it's somebody else's fault. But you know what I know about that person because I've been in this online game for a minute. That person will go try that again because really deep down inside their heart, they believe that they can get the benefit without ever developing the skill. I don't care what they do. You still got to develop a skill in it, no matter what it is. Right? If you want to kill it doing landscaping, you got to learn how to sell people your services. Sales is a skill. So you can go learn how to cut yards, edge, do things. Now you got to figure out how to sell and market your skills to people. How to get people to feel like, you know what? It make more sense for me to do your yard than you to do your yard. Here's the benefits of me doing it instead of you doing it. You got to be able to communicate that to people effectively. You got to be able to understand who your customer is because some people are never going to let you do their yard. You got to figure out, well, who's my ideal customer? Who's the person that's most likely to do business with me? What are they looking for? And how can I do that for them? Those are skills you got to develop in business. So if a guy says, look here, this is how I made 100 grand last year cutting yards. He can explain everything to you. 
But if you don't go develop the skill, it don't matter that he explained everything to you. You've never developed the skill. Because you may figure out, I got to speak to 100 people that have 20 people say yes to me, which means what? 80 going to say no. You got to develop the skill of being able to work your way through those situations. So most people don't want to develop the skill. So they're like, yeah, man, he sold me that, uh, you know, how to build a landscape. Of course, somebody go out, you know, nobody's ever going to sell you, make you be their competition. You wanted to hear that because why? I want a justification for why I didn't go develop those skills. The man gave you the template of how he did it. But you now got to go develop the skills of what he did. It may take you a year and a half. But then after that year and a half, you're not bringing in good money. Because why? People going to keep needing to get their yard cut, especially where I'm at. You get your yard cut literally nine months out of the year. So once you get the clientele base and you can keep them, you're just going to keep making money. Your goal is to get everybody in one area. So you try to get the whole block. You try to get the next block. So now you got a little area and you're doing all those yards. Right? But you got to develop the skills. Then you're going to churn customers. People going to leave. They might come back. Vice versa. Right? So you got to realize is that I'm running a service-oriented business. Then you got to learn about your numbers. What numbers do I need to make this business work? Then you got to get your marketing down. Then you got to get your customer retention down. Then you may want to get some type of automated system to do your bookkeeping. These are all the skills you got to develop to build a successful business. So a person can give you the format. You now got to go develop the skills to do it. When I don't want to do that, I buy the course on how he did it. I read through it. And when I can't figure it out in a week, it's a scam. Right? Then I need to justify why I think it's a scam. Oh, uh, man, you know, ain't nobody gonna ever teach you how to be their competition. No, that's competition because why? He did it. You're not gonna do it. You're never gonna be his competition. If you don't do something, you're never gonna be the competition of somebody that actually does something. You're never gonna be the competition. So you gotta really understand that. So that's what I wanted people to really tap into. Many people are falling victim to themselves and they're not wanting to develop the skills. And their lack of when they develop the skills is going to put them in a position to where they can't be successful. Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. Talk to you later.